Hi guys, I'm Francesca. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am so excited to share this recipe with you guys. It is vegan butternut squash ravioli and a vegan butter sage sauce. Oh my gosh, so good, so so good. I I can't even like I don't even have enough words to tell you how good this recipe was. I made these ravioli using no fancy equipment. I just used my good old fashioned elbow grease, rolling pin, pizza cutter. So simple to do but time consuming i won't lie it did take me a little bit of time between filming it and everything it probably took me about three to three to three and a half hours but like if i were just making it by myself probably only an hour and a half but this is definitely the kind of activity you want to grab a friend for and then you get to eat butter and squash ravioli together so it's really a win-win situation let me show you guys how to make it to start this off, I'm taking one butternut squash that I peeled and chopped off camera, not to bore you guys, and one shallot that I sliced up, and I'm putting it on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Then I took olive oil, probably about half a tablespoon, and drizzled that onto the vegetables, and I just tossed everybody up, got them all nice and coated in the oil, and we're going to bake that in the oven at 450 Fahrenheit for about 25 minutes. While that is baking, we are gonna make our ravioli dough. So I took three cups of all-purpose flour. Please do not ask me how to substitute this because I have no idea. Maybe another time I'll figure out an alternative dough recipe, but I have no clue right now. <laughs> so then I took my whisk and I whisked it all up to make sure there were no clumps of flour. I'm adding in turmeric for color, some salt and olive oil. The last ingredient that you will need is warm water, which I added in at about half cup increments just to make sure that I was getting as much water as I needed, but not too much. Then I took a fork and mixed this all together and you'll see it starts to form these little clumpy bits. I added in a little bit more water and I just mixed that up again. And then it comes to a point when you really can't do it with the fork anymore and it is time to get your hands dirty. So I took it and put it on my counter. And as you can see, the dough is really dry right now. It's barely come together. And I'm just using my hands to kind of squish everything together. And you can of course do this in a stand mixer, but I kind of actually like doing it by hand because I was really able to assess how much more liquid the dough actually needed. So I put in a few more little drops squeeze it all together and it's just a process of kneading it squeezing it it requires a little bit of extra love and time but it's totally doable if you don't have a stand mixer if i do this again in the future i probably will use a stand mixer but like i said it's totally doable without one so again i just added a little more water here and all in all i ended up adding in about a cup and one tablespoon of water to this that can vary from kitchen to kitchen the weather conditions, the amount of flour you actually used, things change, there's so many variables in cooking. So just keep that in mind. You may need to add a little more or a little less water. And then I'm just, again, here back with my hands, kneading away. It turns into this kind of sticky dough and then you keep kneading it and kneading it and then it gets into this nice smooth elastic dough and that's really the stage that we want this to be in the turmeric is totally optional i added that in because regular ravioli dough is made with egg and it gives it a yellow color so i figured we can just add some turmeric in to give these ravioli color so it looks like this finally all done after about 10 minutes of kneading and then i just took my knife and cut them into four slices and then I put the two ends together and kept the two middle guys together because I figured once we roll them out later they'll be about the same length and as you can see the dough is nice and soft and smooth and pliable this is not a super hard dough to roll out later on you'll see so then I just took a kitchen towel and covered this while we worked on the filling so into a blender I'm adding some non-dairy milk then some tofu which is optional but highly suggested it makes it nice and creamy and then finally we're adding in the butternut squash and shallots and i'm just going to blend this up you want it to be sort of like the texture of mashed potatoes maybe you don't want this to be smooth you don't want it to be soup like of course so once it looks something like this i took it out and i just put the salt a little bit of garlic powder and i grated on some vegan parmesan this is the one from violife onto the butternut squash mixture and i folded that in i didn't want to do this in the blender because i didn't want it to become over blended this was 
a perfect consistency the way it was so that's why i did it like this and just give it a little taste and this filling tastes freaking delicious i was like licking the bowl clean so then i took some flour floured my surface and then i took one of my rectangles of dough and i got ready to roll it out again you can use a pasta machine if you have it if you have the extension if you have a crank one but using the rolling pin also works totally fine just again requires elbow grease and love and time so i am rolling it out to as thin as i can get it probably maybe like a quarter of an inch thick and it makes a really really big long rectangle so then i'm going to take about a tablespoon of filling and i'm scooping that out right into the middle and then i'm going to put a little dot directly underneath and we're just going to do this to the whole sheet of pasta dough until it is all filled up you can use a ravioli filler mixer thing you can use an ice cube tray but again doing it like this was totally totally fine works out great so whatever you have whatever you like to do then using my finger i'm going to take water and just line it around the dough this will help the top layer to stick better so i also rolled out a second top layer of dough and this is what we're putting on top right now so you need partners for all your dough you can't have like one dough ball you need two layers then using my hand i am going to go in between the ravioli filling and around the outside and just kind of mark off where the filling is so this way when i cut it later i don't cut into the filling you'll see so now i took a pizza cutter because i couldn't find um like a ravioli crimper or anything and i don't have ravioli stamps so just the pizza cutter works fine and you're gonna take the dough scraps off. Unfortunately, you can't re-roll this out. Once you re-roll it, it's kind of done, so just keep that in mind. So I'm cutting off the borders, trying to get a straight line as possible. And then I cut in between each ravioli. And then finally, the last thing to do is cut in the middle of all of them. So then I just took my fingers and was pushing the filling a little bit more to the middle. If some spills out, it's okay. I had that happen to a lot of them and nothing bad happened, so don't worry. And then I'm gonna take a fork using the back of my fork and we are just gonna crimp the edges closed. Again, if you have, you know, a ravioli stamp, if you have the crimper, whatever, use whatever you have, but doing it like this was totally, totally fine. Worked out great and they were absolutely delicious. So this is one of our raviolo, cause ravioli is plural. This is one of our raviolo all done. And then we are going to make another one. I just figured I'd show you just in case you needed to watch it a second time. So these are them all done. I think I had about 35 ravioli in the end, which was quite a lot. It was a good amount. <laughs> and then we're going to make our sauce. So I'm going to take four tablespoons of vegan butter and put that in a pan and let that melt down and kind of cook up a little bit. Once it is all cooked down, I added in some fresh sage and this smells so good. It just smells like fall. It was so, the kitchen just smelled amazing between the butternut squash and the sage. Oh my gosh. And then I also added in some chopped walnuts, which were really good. I highly suggest you add them in there. While this cooks up, we're going to cook our ravioli. So to do this is very easy. Just take them, put them in boiling water. They need to cook for like two to three minutes. They will float to the top when they're all done and then you just take them out. Uh, you can use a slotted spoon or a spatula. I use a spatula because I can't find my slotted spoon anywhere. <laughs> and just get off all the water. You can of course eat them like this. They're done, they're ready to be eaten, and they taste delicious. Um, you can put whatever sauce on them you want, but I decided to plop them right into the butter sauce and let them almost crisp up a little bit. It came out so good. They were really, really good. <laughs> And this is them all done and cooked up and nice and crispy. And then um, I just put some more vegan Parmesan on there because, you know, why not? I mean, it's so good. The Violife one is absolutely amazing. And that's that. This is the inside cut. Looks so good. It's so pretty. I love that bright orange. That dough on the outside is delicious. These are amazing. All right, guys, and that was our recipe. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know in the comments down below. I love to hear back from you guys. Also, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. We reached 5,000 subscribers, so that is awesome. Bella is like back there digging. I don't know what she's doing. Um, so yeah, as always, the full recipe will be down below in the description box. You can get a link to my blog. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you on Wednesday with another video. Bye.